huge difference. We keep mm -hmm. saying that. They are worth their weight in gold to us. They are an absolutely invaluable asset. Yeah, um, why do you say that? They're a trusted partner, very much so now. It's taken us five years, five, six years to reach this point, but now we have total confidence. When we have got something looming, i.e. a storm or whatever, they're immediately on the ball. They're out, they're checking their area. They're our eyes and ears out there. Mm -hmm. We cannot be, we're a small authority, I cannot be in 100 places at once. They're our eyes and ears, and they report back in, oh, by the way, there's flooding now starting here. Or if there's, say there's new flooding starting, which we're starting to notice now in areas that were never flooded before, they're coming back and telling us, can you maybe check this area because it started to flood, never used to flood, or this road, you know. So, yeah, eyes and ears definitely for us out there. They've made their own communities resilient, and I think that gives the communities some reassurance that it's not just down to the council to, you know, not fix it, but be there. Mm. That that community now has a responsibility. And it's amazing when we do call the teams out, there's a core group for each village. We've got five, what did they put? Yeah, five community resilience groups along the health boots. When we call them out, it's not just the core people that call out, they've got a separate core of people that will come and help, but don't want to be part of a committee or be involved in the day-to-day -day things. They just want to be able to help when, when it's needed. And again, totally invaluable. Mm -hmm. I love what you said about the kind of gathering intelligence because the, the council, you know, they can't be eyes and ears every single place. Yeah. I think that's really interesting that the communities themselves, because they know best like what has or hasn't flooded in the past and where it might be vulnerable. And um, so I think yeah. that's really interesting that they're letting you know, actually, there's kind of potential vulnerabilities happening here. And we've set up a line now. So they have my direct number to have our flood officer direct number. And we're encouraging that. Please mm -hmm. report into us. You know, we're never going to go, oh, we don't want to deal with it. Please come back to us and tell us what your issues are. And now we meet with them once a quarter. We bring the five groups together. Mm -hmm. And that has been the best thing we've ever done, Kerry. Because they share their good practice with each other. But also partners such as yourself, Scottish Water, um, who did we have recently, um, SEPA, are now seeing that forum as where they can come in and give information. So I'll just tell you the one about SEPA. You know how we get this, there's a flood alert in Central. Mm -hmm. and we go, <laughs> Central's too big. <laughs> you know, what does Central mean? When you're in mucker or dollar, Central is not relevant so we're now working with their groups are now working with SEPA to say well maybe we should be in the five part or maybe we should be so they're now engaging nationally with national mm -hmm. agencies yeah that's really and brilliant it's really really good uh, yeah we've got a really good group of people I mean they are and there's a champion in each village which you need you yeah need absolutely champion to drive it uh -huh. but our communities have bought into it so much so I've got an elected member now a member of one of these resilience groups. Oh that's fantastic but like so, you say it's taken a long time to build up those relationships and oh, to support the groups as well yeah, hasn't it? Definitely and it's the relationship building that you need you need we needed to invest in this and sorry excuse me mm -hmm. so I attend every meeting or Miss or Susan and we've made that commitment to the groups. So the groups themselves meet monthly mm -hmm. on their own. And then quarterly, we bring them all together. So one of us will always be at their monthly meeting. Whether we've got anything to input or not, but they know where there is that trusted partner. They mm -hmm. know the faces, it lets them see. And if they've got any issues, we deal with it, as is our flood officer there as well. And to me, that's the important part. I was going to say, how do you find the time to, the time to do that? That for for a really small team, and it's the same with um, local authorities across the board. Whether it's a you know a, a major city or a smaller rural um, yeah. local authority, they they do have kind of very few staff working on emergency resilience. Do you share the load across like other other um, policy areas within the council, or is it all up to you? It's all up to us, and we've just made that commitment because. Mm -hmm. 
we see the benefit. Yeah. And the benefit far outweighs me not going to the meeting. Mm-hmm. You know, and some of the meeting, I'm saying two hours, some of them are only an hour now, we've got it down, and uh, some groups only meet on Teams, which is ideal because you can be sitting in the house and do it at night. But yeah, we've made that commitment, and to me, that's what makes it work. Mm-hmm.